Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Uh, it's been a busy day for us already. I've done a bunch of planting. Like the aura of um, biotone in here <laughs> is strong. Like it's pretty bad. So I'm hoping my snack will kind of like overpower. Got to get some citrus going in here. I can smell that too. You can? Yeah. Yeah, it smells pretty good. I'm hungry. I already ate one. Anyway, uh, I don't know if there's anything we need to talk about before we get into the video. Six videos? Uh, was it six? Uh-huh. Okay. You can't have any, buddy. Not today. So first video from last week was planting containers for sun and shade. Was that the whole title? Mm -hmm. Was that at the college? I titled it, yeah. Oh, was it planting 19 containers? No, that was, that was a different video. Are you proud of your title? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, but people need to understand that I usually ask you, hey, what should we title that video? And you always say, oh, I don't know, just whatever. No, uh, so, I don't usually say that. I send you titles for 99% of our videos. That's true. That's yeah. true. But the 1% of the time that you don't, I'm just like, well, I don't really know what to call it. So so here's what it is. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were at the college for that one, which, oh, okay, I get it. Th that was the big containers. Uh -huh. Like We've done so many projects since that one that I just can't even hardly keep it straight. But we planted up seven. This is really like extra <laughs> extra squeaky today anyway we planted up seven large containers had trees in the center of them down at the baseball diamonds this is all for the college and then we planted uh three more containers that were big rectangular shaped containers that were in shadier spots so it's kind of fun to one do containers that were plant containers that are big and then two to be able to show two different kinds like two different plant combinations sun and shade do you find that you like planting up occasionally planting up like large containers for someone else because you don't have to worry about putting plants that you truly love. Like you can, you I can love test all the ones more we things. Used, though I really loved. But but do you feel like there's a little bit more freedom? Because I noticed in one of the okay. other videos, you used more red, like super tuny, really red. Oh yeah, and yeah. You never do that. No, in I, any of your own containers. No. Yeah, there's freedom in it for sure. Yeah, I just know that the bulk of people just want color. You know, and that was the whole goal. The whole goal of doing our container plantings and in-ground plantings down there this year was to show varieties that create huge impact without needing a ton of plants. Even though I put a ton of plants in those shade Kind of still seemed like a lot of plants. But like in the big ones with the pink, the above and beyond, I didn't use that many plants for yeah. how big those containers were. So anyway, uh, first comment was the top comment. Laura, it's not a filter. I'm tr not trying to sparkle all of us. It isn't dirt on a camera that makes you shine. It's a, oh, it's that beautiful heart and willingness to share your talent. Oh, that is the sweetest thing. Thank you. Our camera is filthy, though. It's filthy. I spent about an hour looking at different cameras that we could use. Because our cameras, the, the quality's crap, too, honestly. Yeah, it's not that great. Well, and it, so it's the G7X Mark II, mm -hmm. and Canon came out with the G7X Mark III, and it's it's junk. It's worse than the Didn't one before. did we try it. it? Yeah, I bought one, and it was literally, I don't know how... S Canon figured out how to make it worse, was but it, they did. Was it the stabilization? No, it was the autofocus. Oh, it like will oh I not, remember. It will not focus on your face. Some of them, like some of our G7X Mark II, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, do, they don't autofocus very well either. Like I'll be talking at the camera for a long time and then I'll realize that the focus yeah, box right. is over here. I'm like, dang it. But <laughs> the, the G7X Mark II does a, even though it's not great, it's still better at autofocus than the G7X Mark III. Gotcha. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if Canon is going to make a G7X Mark IV. We just might need to try out some other things. I just hate, because every time I want to try something out, it's like another $1,000 to try out a different camera. Yeah. And then it inevitably doesn't work, and then I feel bad sending it back or keeping it or... Well, if it's not good, sending well, it back There's is... nothing wrong with it, though. That's the problem, is that like when you're testing a camera... It's not like there's anything wrong. You're just like, oh, this doesn't work for us for whatever reason. Like a lot of cameras don't have uh, stabilization, in-body stabilization, mm -hmm. or some of them have bad stabilization. Like I'll notice when people are moving around, it looks like it's warping. Like oh, the, yes. the, the corners of sick. the screen are warping uh -huh. and that looks horrible. Yeah. Or there's just no stabilization at all, which means that the whole thing just looks extra shaky mm -hmm. and that's bad. So like inevitably, if I'm in a darker spot, or if I'm somewhere where I really want the detail to shine, I just get out my iPhone. Yeah, but the iPhone has a lot of drawbacks too because you can't see yourself when you're trying to film yourself. Right. It's just for like tour purposes, right. that's the only time. But the last tour we did, that was your cell phone, right? 
Yeah, the May Garden tour was my yeah. cell phone. Right. Yeah. Anyway. I wonder if people know. I wonder if people think that I'm using a nicer camera than I'm just whipping out my phone. Yeah, some, sometimes it's worth it to whip out the phone. And that's usually when lighting's a big issue. Yeah, if you're dealing you know? with like things that are really bright or really dark. Yeah. The iPhone typically does a pretty good job. Yeah. Okay. That was a big... Yeah, that was the top Rebel. comment. That's, that's the first one we we read. Okay, next. Liz said, how do you maintain these containers? Do you fertilize or just with water? Um, so we are not going to be maintaining any of the planting down at the college. They have a crew that does that already. In fact, they got the same gal that had been taking care of them for a lot of years, so she knows the ropes. I put in um, a slow release fertilizer so the uh, flower tone and that will feed them for a while and then they'll need water like container wise will need water pretty much every day during the heat of summer that's and what i told her oh. i told them they need water every day oh yeah that's i gave good. her kind of a little bit of a list i said uh -huh. water every day i told them to get captain jacks in fact they um she texted me today she i think she went down to andrews to go get the concentrate because oh, uh -huh. um, i told her the concentrate will go farther mm -hmm. the rtu is nice the, um if yeah, you only have a couple a little, yeah but they have quite a few mm -hmm. um so that's once a week and then uh flower tone once a month mm -hmm. and i told her i don't know what i told i just told her to read the bag yeah because it says on the bag how much to use grandma's world said i apologize if i missed it did you consider the school colors in your flower choice nope Orange and purple, I think, are the colors. Or is it orange and white? No, I think it's orange and purple. Hold on, let me look it up. Um, the We did not consider that just because I think they've done that quite a, a bit in the past, and we wanted to use varieties that we know perform and that we know get big. And all they can, all they wanted, when, when I asked them that question, when we met with them initially, I asked them if color consideration was um, something that they cared about, and they said, nope, we just want the things to look pretty. So I told them I could do that. Orange and white. Or, seriously? Yeah, orange and white. Oh, I was wrong. I was emphatic too. You like, nope. could do orange and white really easily, but where am I getting purple? Um, I don't know. I don't. Well, there is some purple. Okay, so I'll throw or I'll have. Uh, can Can you put purple on the skirt? <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the logo. There is some purple. Well, not in all of them though. That's blue though. That's yeah, not purple. There is there is blue in a lot of the. Well, TVCC I did play in the blues. Oh, there you go. But I didn't do any orange. So you could do a lot of play in the blues. And but what's orange that is like baller? That's amazing. Um, what's that one super tunia, the orange? Honey? Yeah. That's more like mustard yellow. Yeah. That would be pushing Isn't there like in. a Nemesia that's orange? Or? Not, I wouldn't put Nemesia in. We wanted... Nemesia's awesome, but it's not awesome on a huge scale to make it like big, uh, striking. You know, you need a lot of Nemesia. You know, um, I wonder... Aren't there some Proven Winners roses that at are last. orange? Oh, yeah. You could do a we bunch of at last. Oh, oh, we should. We should, yes. That's a good idea. That is. We should try to get our hands on like a thousand at last. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Think big. <sighs> oh, okay. Moving on. Gatiz said, why not a hosta garden? That would be perfect there. Even in the northern entrance where you planted annuals in that raised bed, big, beautiful, and permanent. Yes, that would be really pretty. But I think in this situation... They want to do, um, in containers especially, they want to do annuals so we can change it out. Um, also, uh, budget was a consideration this year. They had a smaller budget to do this, so that's why we're using annuals that get really big. We did ask them though, Aaron um, asked if we could every year just like be given a budget for one area. Like we were planting at a different, not in this video, but we you'll see in an, Another video. Have we put that one out yet? I think we did. Yeah. Um, and in a different video, we planted some pots that are in a shadier area and there's flower beds right in front, but they're kind of like, you know, they're clean, but there's not a lot going on. So we asked if we could be given a budget every year and we would just tackle one spot every single year or every season or something like that and try to make it look a little bit better. And they were all excited about that. So I think that's something we'll probably do more permanent plantings for sure. I think with how, uh, it, like okay so we when you say budget like what we bid on these projects i think that i want to say that they're kind of like oh, i can't believe it's so cheap <laughs> because we're not trying to make any money off of the no. deal really but i honestly think that they would let us tackle like a lot of areas which with how because essentially we're doing it for about whatever the cost of like the plants are yeah um so there's no we're not labor. like and labor is the most expensive thing like mm -hmm. everybody that bids out i mean we know because mm -hmm. we hire people to do stuff hey hey Russell, Chase Louise. Labor is like by far the most expensive piece. Mm -hmm. So if all they're paying for really is just kind of like the plants, I think yeah. that, I think they'd let us do whatever we want. Yeah, probably. 
unless we do a poor job at of it. I don't know. <laughs> SMC said, does anyone know if flower tone is still being produced? It seems hard to source. Is plant tone just as good for annuals? Yeah. If plant tone is what you have, definitely use that. Um, and we are just trialing this, you guys, this year. We're not, you, typically we've done the water soluble fertilizer every single week throughout the season on annuals. And we're trying on different things to use flower tone and use it less often. And hopefully we can get away with not using as much fertilizer and not having as much work um, on ourselves. So we're hoping that that works out well. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll give you guys progress reports as we go along here. Uh, but I think everything is pretty hard to source this year. There's a lot of things that yeah, I mean, like the last two years have been. If difficult. all you can find is plantone, great. If yeah. all you can use find is biotone, use it. great. Yeah. Like just whatever you can. Yeah. Using something's better than using nothing. Yeah. Uh, Hillary said, "Will you or they be spraying for budworms regularly as preventative maintenance?" Yes. In fact, you just talked about dead bug. Yep. Yeah. Captain Jack. And Nancy M said, "Why no perennials?" And I just answered that kind of. So anyway, Aaron grabbed all the questions this morning while I was outside. I was planting peppers this morning while he was getting ready. So I haven't even looked over any of these. So it's kind of fun. You always grab way less questions than I do too. I try to shoot for like um, six to eight questions per like video. I get like twenty per video because I feel bad. Like I want to answer everybody's question. If we would quit talking so much, I could answer a lot more. Okay, next video is pinching and planting snapdragons and a few more flower seedlings. In that video, I had, uh, I don't even remember how many flats, but a whole bunch of them were, they needed to go out into the flower garden. And so I pinched the snapdragons and showed how I did that. And then planted those out as well as a few other um, annuals that were ready. So Bethany said, I love seeing everyone's comments on this channel. People saying hello to everyone or good morning or wishing people goodwill. It's so nice and brings a smile to my face. Just wanted to say thank you to all um, to all for your lovely comments. That is really sweet. And it is a really great, you guys are a great bunch of people. We are so lucky. Water, Wilds, and Weeds said, I've noticed that you have a lot of coleus in your home garden. Are you also utilizing them at the college? Do you ever top pinch um, your coleus? Uh, I do pinch them sometimes. Um, most of the time it's for the trailing ones like the chocolate drop when it gets out of control. The ones I put in the landscape, I hardly ever pinch them because I just want to let them get big. Um, but I did use quite a number of coleus in the shade containers in this in the last video that we just talked about. And then in the next video where we planted more containers, I used a few more. A.M. Lind jo Johansson said, Hey, Laura and Erin, I really enjoyed the music in this video. Where do you find your tunes? I don't oh, know. Um, we get it from Epidemic Sound and Artlist. Typically, those two places. We'll put links below. Cool. Emma said, How do you know which varieties to pinch and what not to? I have Potomac Orange and I'm wondering if I should. Yes, you should. Um, it will tell you, it should tell you on the package that you have or wh whatever website you've ordered them from. Um, just check that out and they'll usually have growing information and it'll tell you whether or not pinching is necessary uh, or a quick google search if you don't have a packet or if you just bought them somewhere and you don't really know where to source you know the information just google it and you should find it tammy said how do you keep weeds out of all this space two ways <laughs> paul and Nathan. <laughs> we have help out there. So Paul is kind of our main guy outside and he's he's awesome you guys. We are we are so incredibly blessed to have him outside. Um, we've also zoned that space so it's broken up into five different zones so that every day of the work, work week each zone is looked at for weeds, possible insect issues, etc. Um, and that way you only have to look at that one zone that for a per day and you can move on to other projects and that way you don't get overwhelmed too so that you can see weeds in another zone but you know that later on in the week you're going to be handling it so it doesn't even need to enter your brain space you just need to like focus on the zone at hand and then work through them th as the week goes on and that's how we manage the gardens right around our house too although it's kind of up in the air right now because so many of the areas are just torn up that i just go around at night usually and pull weeds while i'm pushing samantha in her in her stroller yeah. I get a lot of weeds pulled in the evenings. Um, but Nathan, uh, so Paul really takes care of the cut flower garden. And Nathan, he's uh, the son of a good friend of mine. In fact, I'm going to go over to her house later on this week and uh, help her in her garden, plant her garden. And He's and he, a senior in high school? I think so. Or junior? I don't know. But he's giving us a few hours every week. And he he just drops on the backpack sprayer. And that um, Captain Jack's Deadweed Brew is, is awesome. It's working so great. Okay, I want to say it too. We used a little bit of um, Cleanup HE, which is a synthetic, to try it out. 
And it, uh. I, I, honestly, <laughs> it wasn't like I bought more of the Deadweed Brew. You did. It yeah, worked better. Because and it's an organic. I was, well, yeah. And, you know, we try things out too. Yeah. Like different things to, to test. And honestly, like if anybody asked, I would recommend the Deadweed. And I thought it would be the opposite. I kind of thought like, well, the Deadweed Brew will be fine. But it's an organic, and mm-hmm. so it's not going to work as well as the the cleanup he, mm-hmm. right? He high efficiency, I think. I know nothing about cleanup. Yeah, I had nothing to do with it's that. It's cleanup <laughs> spelled with a K. Um, yeah. Anyway, we tried it, and I mean, it's fine. But I I would way rather rather recommend the <laughs> way <laughs> weather. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the um, deadweed brew just like it kills it like within. Like an hour. And I was nervous the first time we used it because I thought, well, it's just, it made it black. Like it killed the top like crazy fast. And I thought, well, it's just going to top kill everything and the roots are going to still be alive. But it seems like it... Like, I don't see them re-sprouting. I see new things coming up, Mm -hmm. which is, you're going to find with no matter what you spray. Like new stuff is going to, unless you put down a pre-emergent, which we haven't done. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway. Yeah. Huge props to Captain Jack's Deadweed Brew. Yeah. It's been an amazing spray. Please tell me where you purchase mahogany splendor seeds. Can't find them. I got those from Johnny Seeds. Does burying drip tape or emitter tubing cause it to clog, or does it still seem to weep fine under the soil? It's supposed to work above or below the soil when you bury it. We don't bury ours, and I think it would be better to bury it because I don't think it would move quite as much as it does. Like right oh, now, it sure. shifts all over the place. Yeah. Um, but, but then I, you don't know where it is exactly. You, if you don't bury know where it. it is, and it's not as mobile, and it's a lot of work. Can you imagine burying all of that drip tape? Yeah. Uh, well, but you kind of bury it. You just put your compost over the top of it, and you yeah, don't worry about. Yeah, kind of tack it down here and there, yeah. but I can still see where the lines are with the drip tape it has to the emitters have to face up though yeah and which the reason is counterintuitive. for that yeah the reason for that is that you will get um what's it called like particles or um there's a name for that sediment yeah like sediment will build oh. inside the lines mm-hmm. and it will naturally because of gravity it'll settle at the bottom mm-hmm. so that's why you want the emitters at the top because it will weep over the top but mm-hmm. if they were upside down and it was weeping down the sediment, the sediment would get stuck Gather. in the emitters uh debbie said i haven't heard you mention planting fall plants like pumpkins or watermelons will there be any this year this year yes i'm hoping to plant them all tomorrow last year i planted everything in june so i feel like if the more i get planted out there in may i'm like way ahead of the game and i got over 100 watermelon and over 500 pumpkins out of that space planting in june <laughs> it's like so amazing. I feel like I've set myself up for like big failure <laughs> from last year's garden. Last year's garden was just so good. It could have, I don't know. I think it was um, the way, I don't know. It was God's way of like saying, here you go. Like you're so in pain and, impreg- and Here's pregnant. Here's a win. <laughs> Here's a win for you. Yes. This, it seems like crappy soil and it's hot and windy all the time. But here you go. The next video was a May garden tour. So in that video, we just toured you around the garden. It was a long one, like right under an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was long. Uh, Janet said, laughed when Aaron plucked the stray petal off the sunflower bloom. It bothered me too. (laughs) I didn't even, (laughs) I showed it and I didn't even really notice Notice? it. Yeah. Bothered me. The suburban home said, are you not worried that the wood chips come from sick trees? I thought these companies remove sick trees and the wood chips shouldn't be used in the landscape. Um, I cleared that with the company before and we know them like they've done a ton of work for us and I have their like we text personally. That's how well we know them. Um, So I uh, text and I asked about that and they said anything that we remove that's sick, we don't ever drop that at anybody's home it goes to the landfill i think they have like special special areas for stuff like that i don't know anyway um they only drop clean stuff so that might mean fewer loads for us and that's okay um we're just hoping to like the more we get spread out there that's just a tiny bit less dust what's the owner's name again gary needs gary um he he's got an eagle eye have you noticed that like when he told me i'm like yeah I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say, like, he notices if stuff is diseased or dead. Like, I totally trust them yeah. when it comes to what they're what they're chopping up. Yeah. And that they wouldn't give us anything. But, like, he notices stuff on our trees. It's hilarious. I told him we planted those forest pansy red buds, and one of them has, like, a huge crack down one of the br- branches. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hey, I got to show you something. <laughs> and we walked over there. He said, this one got broken in shipping. And I told him, I didn't even notice that. Like, I planted it. I inspected these trees. And he's like, I notice everything. 
<laughs> and he, he does he too. does like he he shows me things that i need to do and like where i should be pruning stuff yeah. and, He'll and be like this, this branch gotta get rid of that one yeah that, yeah that one's not gonna do anything for you yeah it's nice nice to have <laughs> Uh, Darlene said, what kind of grass do you have? It looks beautiful, plush, and green. It's a mix of Kentucky bluegrass perennial rye. It's the most popular blend in our area, and it tends to do really well. My Life McHugh said, also, please provide an update on those bees. What is it, a swarm or a nest behind that access panel? So right after that tour, I went and suited up because I thought, for sure, I'm going to open this door, and there's going to be just a huge swarm like on the back of the door, and I wanted to be prepared. Like I was going to crack the door open a little bit and take a look, if there was a swarm, I was going to go get my box and I was going to try to get those bees and keep them. Um, but I, and I started to film too. So I started to film the process to show you guys and nothing. There were no bees in there. I crawled inside there because I thought, well, for sure they're in the wall or they're up underneath the porch. Nothing. No bees anywhere. Nowhere. And there's nowhere for them to get in between the walls down there. Like it's sealed up. And so there were no bees there, but the re really odd part, it's they were on the other side of the sun porch, kind of down below. This sun porch inside, there was like clusters of bees on the windows and a ton of dead bees on the floor and bees crawling around. And I don't know, like it wasn't enough to be considered a swarm. I don't know why there were dead ones. We haven't sprayed an, an insecticide. Like, I don't know who would have been spraying anything around us. It's not, nobody's near, like close enough. Yeah. I mean, unless, I don't know. So we kind of watched this area because I thought, well, maybe it's the beginning of a swarm. I don't know how they work, you know, and nothing ever showed up. So I was kind of bummed. I was yeah. really hoping that was kind of a, a neat deal. Uh, Cynthia said, why are there so many sun, stray sunflowers? Is that, cause, is that caused by windstorms carrying seeds through your garden? That and birds, I think, both of those things. And the fact that I grew 1,700 feet of sunflowers last year. I won't do that again this year. Uh, Elizabeth said, quick question on the Empress Wu hostas. Do they get cut back every year? Yes, in the fall. I just can't imagine it growing six to seven feet new each year. Yes, they will, as long as they get sufficient water. Sophie said, how do you get your grass so beautiful? Aaron? Espoma products. <laughs> uh, lots of... <laughs> Sponsored by Espoma. Yeah. Um, lots of water. Yes. But honestly, like fertilize four times a year. Yeah. You know? There you go. Yep. Next video was planting a bunch of plants throughout the garden. Uh, so I had just a bunch of things I needed to do. I needed to plant uh, lupins. I had um, some hostas sitting there that had been sitting there for a while. What else did I plant? Some annuals in that kind of one area. I always plant annuals in around the house by the kitchen. I uh, planted some hookahs. What else did I plant? What, did I plant anything else, Erin? I feel like I ended out in the cut flower garden, didn't I? Mm. To be honest, I didn't watch the video. <gasps> Aaron, shame. Well, you did it, Ken edited it, and then you watched it, and I uploaded it. <laughs> Top comment was from Carrie. I come home with two flats and, <laughs> and think I'm a baller. Laura, you're the queen of flats. <laughs> I know that feeling. Two flats is awesome. Yeah. Like when you can carry a flat in each hand, you're like, yep. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it. Do you it's remember? Fun. Okay, this is like a blast from the past, but do you remember when you were working at the garden center and we were talking about somebody who spent like a thousand dollars on their plants for the year? Yeah. And we were like, it was, I like, was, that's a lot. Yeah. And it's still a lot, but it's less when it's your, when it's a business. Yeah. Because, you know, you're making content and so. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, you got to spend money if you're going to keep having content. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I yeah, do it wasn't, remember. It wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't. I remember like sliding that invoice across the table to like the person who needed to pay for it. And I'd be like, Ugh. yeah, like, I know you bought all this stuff and you know, you know what yeah. your total is going to be. But I just felt like, <gasps> like, who would spend I couldn't that, much? Spend that <laughs> much money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monica said, how do you treat the iron deficiency? I think I have a hydrangea that is experiencing chlorosis. We use iron tone, which we need to be a little bit more diligent about, but I think we're going to try a um, foliar application too. It's more of a quick shot that the leaves can uh, soak in, but if we're treating with a um, chelated iron in the ground, 
um, and you know letting that kind of help and work and it's a slower feed and then giving them a quick shot of something I feel like that that would be a good idea mm -hmm. so we'll probably do a video when we do that because we've never done a foliar application and we've got a red point maple that's like yellow yellow and it needs it horribly bad and we do have a quite a number of hydrangeas there's a certain variety limetta hydrangeas for us just chlorosis yeah. I don't know what the deal is anywhere I plant that variety it gets chlorosis everything else seems to be fine like I've got incredible and there's and like pockets, lights and quick though. fires and fire lights thing. nothing it's, does that yeah but there's some varieties that seem to do worse in pockets of our garden mm -hmm. like we'll plant the same variety in different spots and one will have it and one won't but the same with the red point maple that's like, true we yeah. have a bunch of red point maples that are super green so maybe I can't blame it on the plant yeah I'm not sure you can mm -hmm. I think that some areas are just bad yeah it could be uh, Aaron said, I was wondering, would it hurt your yard if you put worms in your flower garden? No. We've got lots of worms, though, like lots. The, the flower bed that has the most is the one right by our kitchen. Like, it is loaded with worms. Mita said, how much money do you spend on buying plants? <laughs> how much? Do you even know? Do you have I, any idea? Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't either, but I know it's a lot. I mean, it, yeah, it's... <laughs> Uh, you know, some of the stuff is sent to us for free. Sure. Um, the m majority, the I don't want to say vast majority, uh, the good majority uh, is purchased. Now, I, well, maybe not before. Now I believe that because now with the new property, I mean, we're doing even big before, trees. And... Even before, I, I mean, because I enter the receipts. And I, I have no idea. I think you're just unaware. Yeah. Um, but we do get, I mean, a lot of the Proven Winner stuff, uh, we don't pay for. Right. Some of it we do, though, because we, do. we yeah. get stuff from your parents' Yeah, whatever we get too. from my parents' garden center, we pay for. People don't think we pay for that. I see that in comments. Or like, oh. Well, we okay, don't pay real, full price. Real quick. Well, no, we don't fair. pay full. Yeah, but it's just like before, you know, yeah. like they do that for all their kids. Um, there was a comment from somebody about like, Oh, why don't you give your parents your extra dahlia bulbs so they can sell them and recuperate <laughs> yeah, all the money that. they're missing out on from all the stuff that you buy from their garden center and they don't make full profit? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> 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 are you kidding me? <laughs> like every time we go down there, there are people there because they've watched our videos. Yeah. I'm like, I think we're bringing them enough business to yeah. where they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, some of the comments sometimes, you guys. So funny. <laughs> Okay, Karen said, how do you miss all the drip tubing when using the auger? Um, I just, I, well, I kind of have an idea of where the drip tubing is already, but when you're using an auger, it just kind of like... There's nothing to catch no, on it just, the drip tubing. Because it if like it's tight... It follows the auger. If it's tight, it can't get bound up. Tight or taut? <laughs> well, some may say taut. He says taut a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it won't... Uh, have we ever... Punctured it. I think if I can't you, say like, I've never done it because I can't remember, but maybe I don't remember having ever punctured drip tubing with an auger. If you put the auger like the tip of the auger, I could see puncturing it if you yeah. just like punctured the middle of it. Right. But otherwise, if you're off to the side at all, it won't it won't grab it. Right. Okay. N. Randell said, What is your goal for the huge garden? Would you be looking forward to a public showing similar to a botanical garden? Uh, that's not my goal. My goal right now is just to create an oasis that we like to be at. Um, I'm not a huge traveler because I'm super afraid to fly. Um, so. We're kind of just riding the YouTube wave a little bit. Don't you agree? Like, yeah. Like yeah, that too. It, we're, we never intended to go full time at no. doing YouTube. And then it happened, and we just had to make the decision. It's like, well, we either don't do YouTube or we do and we mm -hmm. just decided to do it mm -hmm. um, but like we just keep adding more plants and more space just because it's kind of like what we do now and it's fun I mean I kind of always dreamed like I kind of always knew you know how that is that's weird like you kind of see your future and mm -hmm. I always knew I would be doing maybe not videos but I would be doing big gardening sort of things and I was just talking to Aaron too and maybe I can get your guys' opinion but I kind of thought I might want to change the name of our big garden out in the cut, the cut flower garden area, I keep calling it the cut flower garden, and maybe that's an okay title because I do grow a ton of flowers out there, but I also grow a ton of food out there too, and we now have an orchard, and what my intention is with that space right now, in the present, is to grow tons of stuff. Doesn't matter what it is, just grow tons of stuff, um, you know, give to family and friends, use what we need and store some things so that we have some, you know, homegrown food throughout the winter months and then give everything else away. So I thought, well, maybe I could call it the giving garden. Like that seems like a really fun name, but then 
Aaron's like, well, what if you want to experiment trial crop something one year and you don't necessarily like succeed and there's nothing to give from the garden or whatever. You kind of pigeonhole yourself mm -hmm. into creating this um, thing that maybe it won't be one year. But I don't know, maybe we call it the big garden versus the small garden up here. Yeah. Or maybe we just keep calling it the cut flower I garden. I really like cares, the name the giving you know? garden. I do too. Because uh, that's, that's my intention for it. Like that's my hope for it. And right. my hope is that I could actually one day hire somebody to just be like my harvester. Mm -hmm. You come here, you make bouquets, you harvest flowers, you harvest, <laughs> anybody want to apply? <laughs> you harvest flowers, you harvest food. Um, I want to get a scale this year because I want to be able to weigh what we We'll produce. pay you in the food you can harvest from the garden. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. I mean, I would love that job. Um, but I would love like somebody who could maybe even like had a brain for managing a space like that and could figure out how to succession crop to where we like maximize production and we keep things like cruising through that space so that we produce a ton. I don't know. I'm like, gonna get a ton of emails now. Oh yeah. Well, right now I just like, I can't, I don't have the brain space to, to manage all of that. Right now we just basically manage what we can out there and um, are thankful for everything extra that we have to give away, but you know, it could be better. And I want to be a good steward of the space, too. Sure. I think, you know, you also want it to be a fun space, too. And, yes. And that's why I kind of cautioned you just a little bit against, not against. I, I'm not I'm not against calling it the Giving it's Garden It's hard to, like, say this is the Giving Garden and then retract that one year. Yeah, because it's know? like, you know. There's no positive way to come back from right. that to do something different. You're kind of making it like your fun space. Yeah. And your fun space, you enjoy giving, giving the produce. Yes. And we've done that, you yes. know, we've, we've donated a lot, but, but yeah, if you wanted to do something fun that wasn't for others, it might seem selfish if you're doing that in a giving garden. Right. Maybe you guys could weigh in on that and let us know what your thoughts are. I don't, I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. Like, well, let's just grow stuff. Yeah. And if we can give, give. If we can't, we can't. Sure. And whatever, it can just evolve into what it's going to be. So maybe it can just be the cut flower garden or the big garden. That's probably a smarter way to go about it. Yeah. That way there's no um, pressure either. I don't like Also, we need help renaming Versailles too. Yeah, I just don't think I'll ever be able to get that out of my brain. Yeah. It's just, the old owners called it Versailles. It resembles nothing <laughs> to Versailles, except for the formality of the space. Like Versailles has some grass and gravel around it, yeah. <laughs> you know? And there's some topiary and hedges and things like that up there. But yeah, I don't know. But we can't really call it the formal space because that's what they called the back garden, the yeah, back formal is, garden. Unless it, call, it becomes a rose garden, then we can call that the rose garden and call this the formal garden. Yeah, neither one is like uber formal though. No, would you like it to be? Sure. Oh, well, what was that? <laughs> I was excited. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Cindy said, what happened to your dog? Do you still have her? I feel Where like I have you to, been, Cindy? <laughs> I need to uh, throw that question in there every once in a while because we still get I know. I've People seen, wondering. I've seen some actually recently. Um, so we got Molly, German Shepherd, long One hair. freaking video we had that dog in. <laughs> I know. I'm so glad. We, well, I remember you didn't want to. At. You were like, no, we need to make sure that this works first before we do a video. And then we just hauled off and made that one video. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we had her for a very short amount of time. She's we, still around. Yes, she is. We got her when Benjamin was a baby. That was mistake number one. He was one. Mm -hmm. He was just learning how to walk, and she was, as a puppy, right at eye level. Like, her nose was right at his eye level, and he was freaked out by her. She was a little bit too boisterous, I think, for him. And then Russell lost his mind. He lost his mind. Like, I had them both inside, and I had to close. We had French doors inside. And I'd let block off the kitchen from the great room, and we had them shut, but they're glass panes. And um, I had Molly on one side and Russell on the other, and Russell would back up and he'd run and jump like three feet in the air and slam against that glass panel, try, pa panel and trying to get at Molly. Mortal enemies. Ugh. And when Russell was ever around her outside, like she, uh, or he, would like scratch her nose and like create a gash to where Molly was just like dripping blood. Yeah. Um, I was just like, you know what? This was in April when we got her. I thought, this isn't, this isn't good. I just, like we are so busy and I know that's a horrible excuse. It just wasn't jiving. The wonderful thing though that happened is that um, Aaron's sister and his, her family, they had lost their dog the year before. He was a like a, a Malamute Husky mix, something mm -hmm. like that. Great dog. His name was Buddy. And they were wanting to get a puppy, but they were just not in a position where they could do that at the moment. And so we thought, you know what? Let's gift Molly to them. Let's see if they want mm -hmm. Molly. And of course, they like 
immediately yes we want her let's take her so we get to see her still she's a beautiful dog she's a really well, good we dog only had, it wasn't like we abandoned the dog because we had her for like three days a or week. less oh was it a full week yeah okay yeah, we had her a week. Still, I don't think that's enough time for any dog to really bond. That's like... No. I mean, I think what they say adjustments, like at least three weeks or something like that, can be even longer. But we yeah. just like, we didn't have the the time. Next video is planting 19 containers with annuals. We were down at the college again. Mary Ann said, this is top comment. Uh, Hello, everyone. Here's your daily reminder of staking Laura Delphinium and Miss Canthus. <laughs> Lots of reminders from you guys this week. Thank you very much. I still have not staked them. <laughs> Keep reminding me, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stake them. This week. <laughs> this week is the week. Uh, Patricia said, what is the huge purple stuff? Is that lavender or meadow sage or salvia? It's a salvia, and I think the variety is caradonna, the one that's down there right now. It's amazing. Uh, DH said, does your college run all through the summer so students and staff can enjoy all the plantings? Yes, it does. Um, Elizabeth said, I know you spray your supertunias for budworms weekly. I followed that advice and have had amazing success. Oh. I love that. This year I have some shady containers with begonias. Do you spray those for pests as well? Nope, I don't find anything really bugs my begonias, thankfully. JM said, will the plants be watered regularly? I did not see any drip in the containers. If no drip, I'm surprised you did not select more drought resistant plants. No, they have a plan in place and a crew in place to get those things watered. And they're no stranger to it. Like we're coming in on their system. We are just merely putting in the plants. Uh, Kimberly said, I was wondering if you had a guideline for how many four inch pots to put in each size range of round container. I always struggle to figure it out and I feel like I want to, I, I want to pack too many in. Same. I went back to rewatch the video. Four pots. Oh, I don't even want to read this count. Four pots in the 19 inch, five pots in the 21 inch, seven pots in the 25 inch. Oh, that doesn't sound bad. That sounds about right. But it does depend on variety. The ones I'm using get quite large. Um, so you do want to take that to in, into account. If you were to use Super Tunia Bubblegum or Vista Snowdrift or Vista Silverberry, is it raining? Yeah. Yeah, dang. Oh, I love that sound. If you're using any of the Vista Super Tunias, um, I mean, you could essentially plant one, like in a 25 inch container and it would fill it eventually. I mean, they get big. It would fill it and go over the sides. I wouldn't do that though. I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. I would at least put a few in, in each container. Cindy said, nice job. I'm just curious, did the college approach you for help or did you contact them? They approached us. They emailed or called or something. Mm -hmm. They called you or something, yeah. Uh, Lauren said, you said you ordered all of the plants. Do you have them sent to you directly from the Proven Winners grower or do you go through Andrews? I'm having the hardest time getting what I want. We have plugs go from Proven Winners directly to a grower who then brings them directly to our house. It's worked out really well. We also pick up stuff at Andrews. We though. do, yeah. I mean both, but like the biggest part of our order comes from like a, a like a one bulk order, and then uh, we pick up things here and there at my parents' garden center. In order to get the things that we want, it, that's really the best way. Yeah, to Yeah, and it. I, um, it's a really hard thing too. My mom has so many special orders to fulfill, and so many, and then the own, their own garden center to fill up too. So whenever, this is I think a common misconception too, I don't, I hardly ever go down there and just clean them out of anything. If I want something in a larger quantity, I always order it um, special through them or however I need to get it. Uh, and then I only just kind of piecemeal things that I need through the garden center so that I don't like take a whole bunch of their stuff. Uh, okay, next video was moving a few plants and heavy machinery in the garden, gazebo pad removal. So in that video, I was like my last effort to get any plants from around that gazebo pad because I knew that very day a machine was going to show up and start trying to break up that concrete pad. So I dug up some hookerellas, a climbing rose, a boxwood, um, got those all planted. And then we just showed you the process of what Chad and his guys did to get that concrete pad removed, which it was a freaking beast. Yeah. So what we figured out, the, our, we ran into our uh, the previous owner of this house actually in the day. He, he teaches at the college and so he came out and talked to us while we were planting. and. Uh, we were telling him about how this concrete pad was three feet thick in some spots and he said well you remember I don't think it was actually three feet i mean i looked at it it was pretty deep but i don't think it was three i think where Sh chad was showing me he told me it was three feet in some spots yeah. and the spot he showed me was definitely three feet but they hadn't excavated the rest of it ah. um before so it was like the, the worst spot yeah and so that's the one i put in my stories because that's all i could see yeah, was that right. one spot sure so it wasn't three feet in all spots but it was thick in all spots like it was at least a couple feet yeah. in all spots but 
Anyway, uh, the previous owner, Dennis, he remind us, reminded us that where the gazebo sat, there used to be like a sheep herder's dwelling of some kind. It was a small home. Um, and so what he thinks happened is that there was a concrete foundation there and then they poured a new one on top of it for the gazebo pad, which totally makes sense. Because mm -hmm. um, they kind of built up the gazebo, like a little higher in the yard. Yeah. And I think they did, did that on purpose for the wedding. Sure. That was built for a wedding for the owner before the last one for one of his daughters. But anyway... Um, Alana said, top comment, if I could go back in time 10 years and tell myself that someday the highlight of my morning would be drinking coffee and eating cereal while watching plants being moved and a concrete pad being demolished, I wouldn't for, I wouldn't for fear that I would take a different path to avoid it. This is my life now and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is your life now. <laughs> That's funny. It's funny how we evolve. Yeah. We were just talking about age this morning. Were we? Yeah. Or was that last night? Oh, God, I don't know. See? <laughs> the signs Just of our old, age. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, TM Montoya, Tina, said, interesting process. Wondering how much that ball weighs. Did you ask? 2,000 pounds. Whoa. It's a one-ton ball. One-ton ball? Yeah. Like iron? I don't know what it is, but it's... It's... It's like... That ball doesn't mess around. No, it doesn't. Dang. He, I asked Chad um, how often they get it out, and he said that they use it quite often when they're taking out concrete. Where does one get a one-ton ball? You know what? If you're in the business that Chad is in, then you, you get yourself a one-ton ball. <laughs> uh, Brittany said, did you add Biotone for the rose? I did. That part got edited out. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I actually edited that one. You I did? must have accidentally deleted that part or something. The rain. Hold on, I'll get a little video of the rain. Look at that rain just settling all that dust. Miss Malin said, can you put together videos of the gazebo removal and the concrete removal to the Highlights channel? My five-year-old boy loves to watch it and me as well. Can we like mash them together when it's all done? Yeah. Like we could do the gazebo, like from gazebo to Hartley, wouldn't that be cool? I wonder if we could do like a longer version too. Um, like people watching it more in real time. It is quite, oh, I see how the water's like coming down and that's where it's, do you see that? Where it's settling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where we're getting the water damage. Dang, I don't see that very often. Right. Okay, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great idea. Angel said, what on earth? Why is that pad so thick? That must have been fun to watch. It was, you know, we weren't home for a lot of the day, so I dug up the plants. I knew we had to go to the college and plant up. We did the 19 containers that day, and then I came back and planted the plants out. That's why the rose was all wilted and everything, because we had a lot going on. So we didn't get to see a lot of it. I was thankful that we had the footage, though, because that was fun to watch, mm -hmm. like cut up a little bit. Yeah. But Benjamin got to be here. He was here all day, and he got to see it. Karen said, curious, why can't you use the existing concrete pad for the new greenhouse? Is it bigger? Um, the greenhouse is slightly bigger. Like, it's longer than the gazebo was. It's, like, slightly less deep. Just by, like, a foot, I mm -hmm. think, or something. Anyway, it was very similar, but not quite. And we're not going to have a concrete pad as a floor. We're going to actually dig that out and have gravel and all of that. Like, have the flooring, like, sand and gravel and pavers. Mm -hmm. So water can just seep right down. So we can actually use it like a greenhouse that's outside. Um, because... Otherwise, I think if we had a concrete pad, it would be a nightmare to keep those floors clean and right. all of that um, and water and making sure you had a drain that went somewhere. So we're just kind of going with it like our cold frame is, um, but we are going to have the ability to heat and cool this one, which will be nice. And last question, the cats, who, who follows you more often, Cheddar or Russell? I'm guessing Russell. Yes. Russell is like, is he in here still? Oh, he actually left. That's crazy. Just a little bit ago, he was using my back as a scratching post. <laughs> I don't know if you could see me kind of going like this. But yeah, he finds us. Cheddar like, likes to go off and sleep, and he'll come around every once in a while. But uh, no, Russell is definitely the one who is more attached. And that is it for today's recap video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you have a great week, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.